Today I would like to talk to you about something which should interest nearly 7 billion people, and that's overpopulation. When I mention the topic to people, they'll tell me there's no problem with overpopulation, and there never will be. Yet the Earth's size is finite. We can't have an infinite number of people. Scientists tell us the Earth's carrying capacity is 4 to 6 billion people. You might argue the actual number is 10 to 15 billion, but as I'm getting ready to show you now, it doesn't really make that much difference which numbers we use. Here are some problems that come with overpopulation. We read about these things in the news all the time, but rarely is the issue of overpopulation mentioned. It's the elephant in the room. No one wants to talk about it, and yet it is the root cause of so many problems. Here's an interesting assertion. The greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. The exponential function is just an equation which tells us the size of something that's growing at a rate that's proportional to how big it is. If you put a million dollars in the bank, you'll notice it grows faster than if you only put in a hundred dollars. Yet each one is growing at a rate proportional to its own size. Say, for example, five percent per year. Now, I wouldn't want billions of people to die a horrible death just because people can't do math. So I won't show you the equation. Instead, I'll just show you this pretty picture. Horizontally, we have time, and vertically, we have the size of the thing that's growing exponentially. The money in your bank account, the world's population, the rate that we're sucking resources out of the ground. I've scaled this time axis so that you have the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 when the size axis goes through 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. With different growth rates, you just change the numbers on the time axis. The curve will stay the same. The key feature I want you to notice is that the doubling time is a constant. It always takes the same amount of time to go from 2 to 4 as it takes to go from 16 to 32. The actual doubling time is given by the simple formula, 70% divided by the growth rate. So for our bank example, 5% per year divided into 70%, that gives us 14 years. So your money will double in that bank in 14 years, whether you put in $100 or a million dollars. I've lived long enough to see the world's population double over the last 35 to 40 years. That tells me that the growth rate over that time has been around 2%. You may have heard the story about the guy who invented the game of chess. This made the king very happy. He offered him a reward. The guy says, okay, I would like some rice. On the chessboard, put one grain of rice on the first square, two on the second square, four on the next, and eight on the next, and just keep going until you fill up all 64 squares. If you don't remember the story, the punchline is it's a really large amount of rice. The guy was playing a prank on the king. The number of grains of rice on each square shown here is reproduced in the middle column here. The left column is just the square number and the right column is just the sum, a running total of the grains of rice so far. So on square 5 we see that we have 16 grains of rice and 31 is the number of grains of rice on the first five squares combined. The thing I want you to notice is that after each doubling, each square has more rice on it than all the previous squares combined. We notice on square 6 that we have 32 grains of rice, which is bigger than 31 of the previous five squares. What this means is that if we were to discover some vast new oil deposit, the size of which is as large as all the oil we've ever used throughout all of human history, we would just gobble it up in one more doubling period. Here's the number of grains of rice. It would weigh 461 billion tons. It would be a pile of rice bigger than a large mountain. If you attach the rice end to end, it would extend way beyond the nearest star, four light years away. Now let's consider some bacteria in a jar. They grow exponentially. These bacteria have a doubling time of one minute. We stick one bacterium in the jar at 11 o'clock and we notice the jar fills up at 12 o'clock. So what time was it when the jar was half full? Somewhere between 11 and 12, it went through the midway point. Well, because we know the doubling time is one minute, the answer is 11.59. At 11.58, it was a quarter full, and at 11.57, one-eighth full. Now, what time do you suppose it was when the bacteria realized that they were screwed? Was it back here at 11.58, when the jar was 75% empty? Now, fortunately for the bacteria, they discover three more empty jars. This is triple the space they've ever needed throughout the entire history of their existence. Well, what time is it when they fill those up? Well, we know the doubling time is one minute, so 12.01, 12.02. If we were to discover three more empty planet Earths, I would probably live long enough to see the first one get filled up. If you were born today, you'd live long enough to see them all get filled up. 
but we don't have three more empty Earths. So let's look at our options. On the left, we see a list of things that cause the population to increase. We can just stop doing those things. But if you notice, those are things that we kind of like. I especially like these things here. Medicine, public health, sanitation, law and order, action prevention, cleaner. We don't want to give that up. So let's look at the right column. These are things that cause the population to decrease. We can just do more of those. But if you notice, some of those are pretty nasty, some more so than others. Well, I think we've already established that we will have zero population growth. It's a mathematical certainty. The question is, which one of these things will be responsible? Now, the good news is we don't have to decide. We don't have to choose from this list. We can just do nothing and let Mother Nature choose. But Mother Nature can be a bitch, and I'm guessing she's going to pick these nasty things here. Disease, war, murder, violence, famine. I vote we choose for contraception and small families. Now with overpopulation, you have less freedom. Your freedom stops where the next person's freedom begins. With overcrowding, that next person's a lot closer. Now don't shoot me, I'm just the messenger. You should be happy you found out when you did. Think about the poor saps who bought a Hummer right before owning a Hummer became a bad thing. And remember, that happened almost overnight. Likewise, having a large family will become a bad thing. And it'll probably happen almost overnight. We've already seen the backlash against Octomom as more and more people are feeling stifled by the growing number of people on the planet. Due to the nature of exponential growth and humanity's inability to understand the exponential function, this is going to catch many people by surprise. But not you. You now understand the exponential function.